What is going on guys? This is Jim from The Kelly Boss. Welcome back to another video on my channel. I know it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video. Um, so I thought I really gotta show you guys my new animals, uh, my older animals that have been developing very nice for me. I'll show you a couple of animals. I'll start with this 2018 North Brazilian uh, female from Eugene Bissett's bloodline. Uh, she has really put on some solid size. I think I did a video on her almost two years ago, maybe. I don't know, I have to check, I'll link it up top. Uh, so you can definitely see how she's uh, gained quite a, quite some size, but um, for about five years old, she's still a pretty, pretty manageable red tail. I think I'll try to breed her at the end of this year or maybe next year, uh, depending on how much more she'll gain this summer. As you guys know, I don't power feed my animals. I don't feed them any more than I would normally if I wouldn't breed them. So basically, she ate a week ago, so I think she has some pretty, pretty solid uh, muscle tone on her. No fat or something. Pretty, pretty beautiful boar. So I think she's uh, getting ready to breed uh, for her first breeding trial, but we'll see. Uh, the male is definitely ready. I've even had some sperm plugs of the cool season. Um, so I think he's definitely ready for his beautiful girlfriend. So we will see about that. Um, I definitely got some new animals too that I haven't showed on my channel, maybe on Instagram. If you guys follow me at Locality Boss for the latest updates, I'm way more, um, way more active on social media uh, forms such as Instagram and Facebook. Uh, so make sure to follow me there too. Um, but nonetheless, I'll still have to make videos and I still want to make videos, but a lot happened. I know it's the same excuse always, but for everybody that works full time and cares about a uh, couple snakes and, you know, private life too, family, etc. Uh, knows that some situations just have priority and I hope you guys understand and bear with me on, on this channel. So. Um, this is my 2018 North Brazilian female, um, again, uh, five years, almost five years old now. At the end of the year, she'll be five and a half. And she's about the size that her mother was when she had her first litter. So I'll see. Uh, the parents are from Vin Russo, um, pure uh, Bisset bloodline. For anyone that works uh, with the Bisset bloodline, they'll know that these animals stay a little, a little bit smaller than your average Tourette ball, uh, but are a little bit hardy in the beginning. So I wouldn't suggest uh, at least this bloodline of North, North Brazilians uh, for beginners. So, but yeah, if she lets me go. Damn, she's really gotten strong. So I'll put her back and I'll show you some new animals I got that you haven't seen before. Very beautiful animals. So just give me a second. And as you guys can see, these animals still climb, even if they're older, even if they are uh, heavier or get bigger, they still climb. Maybe not as much as the juveniles, but they still climb. Um, so I got the man up here. Uh, he has a little bit different pattern, but I just wanted to show you this uh, female real quick. And now I'll show you an animal. I hope I don't get bit by this because she's, she's a little bit feisty, but I'll still show you. Take the hook just in case. All right. She's, as I said, not the friendliest animal normally. So I'll try not to get bit by her, but I hope this camera focuses. Where do I have to put it? All right. There. So, as some of you might have guessed, this is a uh, Sabolge Island boa, a Pearl Island boa. Uh, these come uh, from the Pearl Islands off of the coast of Panama, um, a little bit south from where most of the island boas are coming from. So, um, probably closer to Imperator range than BCC, but nonetheless, there are still their own subspecies, and there have been just the number of uh, shipments of these coming in and uh, there have also been some animals coming from a different uh, island it's called the Tobogay Island 
which is right next to the Saboge Islands, one of the Pearl Islands. So basically they're all Pearl Island balls, but if you want to refer to the Saboge Island balls, that's what you're looking for. Um, this girl was bred by my good friend Udo Wagner and uh, originates from Rich Isles bloodline that uh, Klaus Bonny uh, fortunately imported some from. He also uh, went to the islands um, to check out how these beautiful boars live in the wild and he all captured this uh, with pictures and uh, very very nice information in his book unfortunately only released in German so if you lucky to understand some German uh, definitely grab that book if you don't have it already um, but yeah today she's behaving every time I want to tell someone oh, this girl's feisty you know every time I clean up or if I if I uh, just try to handle her normally she's getting pretty pissed so we'll see about today but yeah these Sabogate balls are very nice semi-dwarf balls I would say they're pretty elongated but they're still girthy so not as heavy um, as you know your mainland imperators or BCCs uh, but also bigger than you know your hog islands or corn island balls um, that we also keep but I don't have here at my place they're at my home dwarf balls uh, place so make sure to follow him I'll link his Instagram in the bio of course so yeah this is my only island boss so i'm pretty pretty proud of her and i hope to get a get a mail from udo uh, in the near future and if not i'll have to import one from michael beach he's breeding some beautiful sabogas too in the us so definitely definitely want to maintain this beautiful locality in my collection but it's not the only uh, new addition i got so i'll show you some more animals in a second So these are by far my smallest balls I have right now. And um, I know I talked about uh, ball constrictor Amorale quite a lot in the last videos, but since they're one of my very, very favorite balls, um, not just uh, the Bolivian ones, but overall uh, the short tail balls are very fascinating to me. And I was lucky enough uh, to acquire a group of uh, so-called silverback Bolivian Amorale short tail boss. I hope the camera focuses on this pretty small tail as you can see right here and this beautiful silver coloration. So there's barely any pink in these, just a little bit on the sides, uh, which significantly gets less with every shed. So they are really kind of a grayish boar. Um, their saddles are rather slim, um, one animal is a little bit aberrant in comparing to the other ones, but they're very, very beautiful balls. So as you can see, um, just amazing and you don't see these around too much, especially here in Europe, they're pretty rare. So I'll definitely try and reproduce these just to make them available for the people. Um, but yeah, I've been waiting for some of these for quite some time because these are really the epitome of the short tail ball to me. I mean, they all come from Joe Terry bloodlines, which was the founder of basically all the Bolivians in captivity. If you read some of the literature that, um, you know, describes these, he was the uh, first to buy them from a place called Pet Farm, I believe, down in Florida, where he acquired his first, uh, uh, his first white caught animals and then he got some from a zoo i forgot if that was florida too if you know that about that detail please write a comment and then he separated his projects into several bloodlines um one of them he called the silverback bloodlines and those animals are characterized by this you know silver coloration the thin saddles often um very peaked or thumb belt shaped and that's exactly how what these guys resemble so i'm very happy to have these in my collection i did a video on bloodlines before so if you're new to this uh, channel or are new to boss don't get confused by all the names and brandings that people add to their animals to separate themselves these are bolivian boss just like my other bolivian boss the the red line uh, barry miller project i have 
So these are Olivia, just like the other ones. And it's just a thing of personal preference, what you like better. If you like this, you know, steel grayish look of the silverback animals, you should try and get some silverback animals. And if you like more coloration or a little bit, you know, pinks and browns in your animals, then you should look for some, you know, more of the, you know, classic projects of Bolivians. So there's quite some variety in these and don't get caught up in any hype or anything. So I just refer to them as silverbacks because people know what I'm talking about and people, uh, you know, kind of se can separate my one Bolivian project from the other one. So these aren't better or anything. I just like the look and this is just my favorite look in the short tail boas personally, but I still wouldn't trade my red line for anything else you know what i'm saying so basically everything i have here is what i enjoy if i breed it or don't breed it i'll see but i'll definitely only keep animals that i really enjoy and i do enjoy these i'll show you one of the other males i think the females in shed so i don't want to bother her too much but i'll show you another male of these in a second all right, so this is the second male I got. Again, you can see this very, very short tail. So they always, almost always have about three to four tail saddles, nothing more. And, you know, very little red. I mean, it's, it's still stronger in the babies, but it'll get significantly less as they age. And this animal shows more of the, you know, thumbbell kind of, you know, thumbbell kind of shaped saddles but they're all beautiful on their own. So I'm very, very happy to have these and they're very hard to come by. I know in the US there are a lot of people or not a lot of people, but a few people work with these. In Europe, it's very hard to find them at all. Um, so if you get your hands on some, make sure to buy them because you don't know when the next opportunity comes. And I mean, the prices of these have just gone through the roof. All the locality boss have pretty much doubled through the whole COVID pandemic and now the inflation caused by the war and everything here in Europe. It's just gone crazy. So I'm very lucky that a few of my snakes I got a few years back. So I don't have to spend like uh, three times the money now. You know, Peruvians are almost nowhere to get. I know in the US they've increased the popularity, uh, increased in popularity. Overall, the locality boss are getting more and more popular. So. A lot of people are trying to get their hands on some projects, you know, to breed in the future or just, I don't know, maybe they appreciate the natural forms more and the hobby is kind of going this direction because the people want, you know, animals that are just like that in the wild for conservation purposes whatsoever. So definitely have to consider paying higher prices for your animals now. Uh, then you know let's say five years ago so the next animal I want to show you um, is one of my red line uh, Bolivians short tail boas um, I'm not trying to talk about the bloodlines too much just to give you guys uh, a different look of Bolivian boas so this boa for example uh, resembles a lot of color compared to the silverbacks um, I called this male freckles just because his head you know I hope he lets me show you uh, he has some crazy, crazy speckling going on, especially in the head and tail area. And again, this is a male and you can still see how short his tail is. So uh, these animals originate from Joe Terry as well, obviously. Again, all the Bolivians do pretty much. I don't know if there's some exceptions. Um, I don't want to, you know, get caught up in this. So if you have some more information, please write a comment and share because I always want to learn more, of course. Um, but anyways, so these were uh, selectively bred by Barry Miller in 2006. Uh, he labeled them his red female litter, which kind of uh, initiated the whole red line thing. So as you can see, I hope the camera can just get close to what they look like uh, uh, live, but they're very red. They have a lot of pinks and reds going on that will fade out into, you know, yellowish, brownish coloration as they get older and older. But I just really love the Bolivians. So I thought I have to have, you know, two projects that are different from each other. I'll also not plan to uh, crossbreed these because I don't know, I just think they're pretty on their own. Um, so I'll just keep them two separate projects, but 
I don't know, they're just so beautiful and especially this male with this peak, peak look, his speckling and you know the color and they get kind of a chunky body build. So this is a 2021 animal and as you can see they're pretty chunky or I should say muscular which all the short tail balls are. They're pretty you know short and stout but very muscular so basically the body of a BCC just like shorter with a short tiny tail maybe maybe like a little like a ball python I know this um, reference has been made a lot but I don't know it's just the perfect way to describe these guys but yeah again as you can see beautiful beautiful male Bolivian um, I'll also show you one of my surnames um, as you guys might know I work with the F1 bloodline which means they're the first generation from white cod, so no selective breeding whatsoever has been done and it's a fresh gene pool. So I'll show you uh, the female, because I don't want to take it too long. Uh, this is just a short video, I didn't script anything here. Just wanted to give you guys an update and show you that I'm still alive and doing, doing what I love. So just give me a second, I'll grab the surname female. All right, so this is my F1 generation 2020 Suriname female. I hope you guys can see. She's kind of in a dark phase right now. Um, she ate about a week ago too, I think. As you guys can see, I don't feed too large of prey items because I want to raise them slowly, but she's definitely developed very nicely. So this is kind of what you look for in a two and a half to three year old Suriname. Uh, don't worry if your balls are smaller as long as you feed them properly. Um, there's different genetics and different bloodlines. So some may turn out bigger, some turn out smaller. The parents of these, uh, as I said, were white caught, so you don't really know how old they actually were when, I, when they bred, but they were pretty big. I believe around nine to 10 feet, which is pretty damn big for you know certain amateur red tail boa uh, they usually stay in the six to eight foot range and i hope um that at least the males don't get too crazy big but i mean i'm prepared for anything so i'll see but the female is definitely putting on some nice size and i'm very very excited to see how much darker she'll get she's definitely gotten way darker than before so I don't know, the third year is always very interesting. At least it was with my, uh, you know, Brazilians. In the third year, they really colored up and now they kind of have their adult colors. So, very beautiful, beautiful animals. No problems whatsoever with these. Uh, I know a couple people that work with Surinams and they had kind of had problems with regurgitation with some bloodlines, especially some bloodlines that have been bred uh, over many, many generations. Again, every animal has to be treated, you know, individually. So you don't, you can't always blame the bloodline or anything. Sometimes you just have bad luck and you just have an animal that's a little bit more tricky. But I just can't say that about these so far. So very, very beautiful, beautiful true red tail balls. And I mean, this cherry colored red tail, burgundy red tail is just a thing of its own. So. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for still watching my videos after these seven months or eight months, I don't know. I'll definitely do my best. I don't wanna promise anything when I'll up upload again. I'll probably upload next or the week after. But here you guys have a little bit of an update. Of course, I didn't show every animal. I'll show you my Peruvians again and everything. So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, like, leave a comment what you guys think uh, about these animals or what you guys think about boss in general. And I hope I see you again on the next video.